I took my TRT dose this morning, took a bottle of Primo out and looked at it, and then put it away and said, next hey, week. No, it plus. is plus, plus. It's like, as long as I add the plus, I can take whatever I want. Yeah. Coach Colton here, Seth Ferrosi is back on gear after having been retired for just about 12 years and talking about trying to maintain a healthy lifestyle after having some serious health issues in his bodybuilding career. And now, Suddenly, this is a new journey for him. He wants to get to 240 pounds after having been living a lifestyle that's using just a little bit of gear. The last time I heard him quote how much he was using, it was something around 250 milligrams of testosterone and four IUs of growth hormone a week. I could be wrong, and please let me know down in the comments below. He has decided to take this journey down to 240 pounds, and I think we can all kind of point out as to why this might be a not so great idea. In this post by Buys and Tries, we see a lot of comments that are pretty demeaning, to be honest. A lot of ones that have a lot of, uh, well, contentious thoughts about what Seth is doing. In fact, talking about, didn't he have some serious health issues? These people need to invest time in a good therapist, not even making fun he had kids. And it's very clear that there's been a sudden shift in Seth's goals during this period of time. For whatever reason, he did a complete 180. Uh, the, earlier this year, you guys saw me get up to 222, 223, hang in that range. Um, had the summer, it was super busy, had the GNC launch, all the support from you guys was fucking tremendous. Uh, it still is, we got a ton of other cool shit planned, but um, I said in the fall, if everything continued to go good with the companies and my health and my blood work and everything, I'd go back in to see what I was made of, see if the body could still fucking handle it. Here he says he was 220 pounds to 225 this year, and now he wants to see quote, <laughs> what his body can still handle. Now, I'm honestly unsure as to what all is being taken by Seth. Again, the last I heard was the 250 milligrams of test and the four I use of growth hormone. In some videos, he mentioned a couple other things, but I don't know if that was just sort of being joking or if he was actually being serious. But just to be very clear with everybody, TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, is not 250 milligrams of testosterone. It is not four I use of growth hormone. That is clearly a cycle for many, many people. And you might think, well, if he needs to get his testosterone levels up to a certain range, he might need 250 milligrams. And if you're that big of a human being and you've been using a larger dose of androgens for a good portion of your life, you actually will have more androgen receptor density than you would if you hadn't used androgens at a copious amount for the most of your life. And so the actual argument could be that you could use less and get away with more, even if the serum testosterone levels were actually lower than somebody else. But I will say it is more modest compared to what most bodybuilders are running these days because bodybuilders tend to, well, abuse steroids. This is very clear. Also, a sudden oddity that we're seeing Seth turn into Giga Seth as he started to do something a little bit different this fall. And we could take that something at face value in which the information that has been given to us through Seth's videos recently is that he's just been manipulating food for these results and hasn't been adding his favorite anabolic anadrol yet. In fact, actually, in many of the videos, he talks about preferring to now start to focus on more of a mind muscle connection and being really cerebral with his training as well as just getting a little bit more intense with it all together i think there's a lot of alternative methods that seth really talks about that other people simply don't because well they're not science based which honestly very clearly i think is important because at the end of the day people these days are focused so much on being in a box of what you can think and in fact it's really clear that you're not able to think critically about your situation or other people's situations anymore without disturbing the populace at large. You aren't embraced to use your own intellect or to critically oppose what other people might be saying. And if you do critically think about certain situations, you're usually left in the dust by two different groups. You're either on this side or that side. The dogmatic group that you might have been labeled a part of has now left you behind because you might think more of what the other dogmatic group is trying to preach, but then at the same time, you don't agree with that group and you're somewhere in the middle and you're just trying to talk critically about what you think. And so now you're just belonging nowhere and everyone thinks you're an idiot. We see this in politics, fitness, gaming, movies. I mean, just about everywhere in life these days. If you try to think critically about things and or people's opinions or just state your own opinion often, that is in the face of many others, that doesn't fit inside the box that's been predetermined for you, it often results in rejection. 
attention from either both sides or even just everybody at all. It seriously becomes a divisive thing because you just don't fit into a certain part of the group that you were supposed to fit in, but you didn't really fit in in the first place, but you were just labeled by that other group who's against the group and it's this really weird social dynamic with again just about everything we do and it's in this realm the science space group versus the bro science group and it's like this super huge dichotomous argument thing where if you say one thing you're with this side and if you say another thing you're with this side and you, you can't just have an opinion like you you aren't encouraged to just think critically about something you have to fit inside of the box that you are provided and that's like with everything and i think it's absolutely crazy but one of the reasons that i do like sath is that he is kind of an outside of the box thinker he does not really shy away from talking about what his thoughts are his opinions and how he interprets reality but anyways here's the point of the whole video is what seth doing stupid will it cause negative health impacts well the short answer is yes it is stupid the long answer is well I mean, here's the long answer. First, elevated insulin. Seth talked about using pre-workout Humalog a bit in his videos that uh, he's been posting recently on YouTube where he walks through workouts. Hyperinsulinemia is an important etiological factor in the development of metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and premature mortality. And mind you, this is all independent of fat mass. Someone can have a very lean body mass index and still be considerably much more at risk for immediate death, which with a elevated insulin at a chronic rate. And again, Seth has already mentioned using Humalog many different times pre-workout to get the best pumps and the best results. Again, I honestly can't tell though if he was joking or being serious or what this was, but still very clearly, even if you're not using insulin and just eating more to put on mass, which usually means for most bodybuilders consuming a surplus of carbohydrates to create the stimulus to grow, via circulating insulin and other anabolic agents such as protein and all obviously AAS. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to result in a higher fasting insulin. And I'm not an anti-carbohydrate advocate. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm talking about here is whether you're eating a copious amount of carbohydrates. I mean, a absurd amount of carbohydrates to put on weight, not just a couple hundred carbohydrates pre and post workout or something like that to get to a point where your body mass is ridiculously large even compared to that of an obese person you have to eat a considerable amount of food and i think we can all agree that having a surplus of anything probably isn't generally healthy but next without any dispute i think it's very clear that taking anabolic androgenic steroids is terrible for your health in certain contexts and of course if you're abusing things that does result in unfortunately a lot of detriments to functionally being a human altogether and it can increase your risk for a lot of things especially while you're at an older age and seth isn't old as dirt but he's a lot older than when he was in his 20s for one steroids increase cardiovascular disease risk massively but many other health related issues as well we also have a study that emphasizes that individuals predicted to be at a absolute higher risk for CVD events are more likely to derive net benefit from CVD prevention treatments with age being the considerate factor for risk stratification. So what I'm saying here is that the older you get, the more a necessity for CVD treatment or prevention is absolutely critical. And not only this, but he's characteristically in the past been at risk for CVD just from using large doses of anabolics and many other uh, medications that are considered performance enhancing drugs. So it's very clear to me that, hey, we got some issues with this, right? Like increasing the doses of anabolics, which is an independent risk factors or for CVD and other risk factors on top of being an older individual now and in later ages, increasing you know risk factors of CVD independently. Um, it's like a double whammy. It's not a good situation to be stacking anabolics on top of pre-existing risk factors. And also the risk factors that you developed when you were younger using large, large, large doses of trendalone and other anabolics, which he's also admitted to. The other thing that I don't think many people considered is that this is a point of contention for Seth himself, or at least it was. Clearly told many bodybuilders to to stop taking steroids because it would literally kill you. Which leads into the next point I'm going to make, which is that steroids are addictive. As many bodybuilders like to say that they're not and they could quit at any time freely and actively, it's 
simply shown time and time again that this is not true. And this isn't just a public opinion, but you can certainly see it happening in general population when you're looking at bodybuilders. This is clinical data as well. And I'm not excluding myself from this party at all. I've talked about how hard it is to just stop taking steroids, performance enhancing drugs, peptides, other things, because it's great. Like it, you do derive a lot of benefit in a lot of different situations, but of course there is going to be implied risks because, well, biology doesn't give you free lunch. We've had data since the 1980s talking about this exact issue and many other studies as well. Well, I mean, this data is clearly displaying a psychological trend within users of anabolic steroids. It's addictive for more than just one reason, including manipulating dopamine function in the brain, which is your reward system, implying that you can actually derive more of a intense rewarding feeling from doing steroids. And what we often see is that a bodybuilder says, I'm quitting or I'm coming off or I'm going on to TRT now. And then one year later, they're the same size. They're still yoked. They're still veiny and vascular, and they're still living the lifestyle of a bodybuilder without really any significant changes. To be very clear, I'm no... I'm not the guy to tell you to stop taking steroids. I'm not the guy to say that I'm anti-steroids. I, in fact, think sports should include steroids, which is a, another contentious statement. But I do think they have a place in this world, and they're awesome in many different ways. But the problem is, is when people abuse them, misuse them, or are in an environment that encourages the use of them. Noticeably, the sudden increase of Seth's desire to get bigger aligned with him showing up on Fuad Abiyad's podcast a lot more and hanging around with other open bodybuilders doing the things that he used to do and love. And I'm also not a man to criticize a way of another's life. I think that the best way to live your life is to enjoy the passage of time as much as possible. And if that is for Seth getting bigger, lifting weights and doing the damn thing, then go do it. That's awesome. But I do want to be very clear to people that just because he's getting jacked and more lean and looking really good, making more social media content, Content seeming a little bit more peppy and happy doesn't actually mean that in all of reality he is going to be better for it internally and it also doesn't mean that you should really follow in his footsteps dieting eating higher protein losing body fat is absolutely healthy and i suggest most people do it but that doesn't mean you need to run a large cycle to follow in seth's footsteps if you really want to be healthy the simple thing i can think about that really would help a lot of people is just eat more protein generally track your tra calories for for at least two to three months to understand where your caloric needs are to maintain or even lose just a small amount of weight per week and then continue to do that for the rest of your life whilst you lift weights resistance train and do some form of intensive cardio at least three Three to four times a week and make sure you're walking somewhere around eight to ten thousand steps a day and that's basically all you need to be doing i think there's a lot of talk about what's right what's wrong and this huge ambiguous formation of information on the internet that we just have so many different veins of rights and wrongs at the end of the day it's super simple right if you want to look good you just simply track your food understand where your body belongs at calorically make sure you're eating enough protein and then just perform enough activity to synthesize muscle tissue and to keep your body cardiovascularly healthy, to increase mitochondrial function, these kind of things, doing vigorous activity three to four times a week. It works perfect. And you'll generally get the best physique in most people's eyes that you'll probably ever want. You don't need steroids. You don't need to do this intensive winter bulk or winter arc cycle or any crazy shit like this. And I am telling you from the other side, the grass is not always greener. But if you like this video, comment, like, and subscribe. It does me a huge favor and I do appreciate everyone as they do it. It means the world to me and I seriously love every single comment I get, whether it's bad or good. I love to read them. So I will see you later.